It's Friday, August 13, 2021. Wow. It's Friday the 13th. And let me tell you, it feels like Friday the 13th when you read some of these articles, when you watch what is happening to the once greatest economy in the world. It is being absolutely dismantled at this point. CNBC, IRS IRS Treasury sends $15 billion in child tax credit payments to families. Child tax credit payments totaling $15 billion were issued to families with 61 million kids in August. This is, ladies and gentlemen, what a collapsing economy looks like. Now, uh, as the benefits uh, expire, as people people's unemployment expires, well, well now we're, we're sending billions of dollars uh, to people with kids to keep this economy alive. The federal government began sending funds up to $250 to $300 a month per child, depending on their age. Uh, this began on July 15th. Billions of dollars going to people with kids now. Again, this is what a collapsing economy looks like to these people out there who still don't get it, who live under a rock or, or maybe they're just smoking too much or something. I don't know. And, and look, I know people have mental disabilities, learning disabilities, and I'm not making fun or I'm not judging anybody. But really, well, this is what, okay, this is what a collapsing economy looks like. When you're having to pay millions of people in your country to stay home, produce nothing, manufacture nothing, make nothing, uh, this is what a collapsing economy looks like. Now we're paying people with kids, okay? If things were so good, how come the federal government has to send money to everybody to keep everything propped up. Maybe instead of sending all this free money to people, maybe we should figure out on how to create jobs here in America that pay a living wage, where people uh, can go to work, produce something, make something, um, have some self-respect. I don't know about you, but my grandparents never took a dime. They'd be embarrassed to take a handout. My parents never took a handout. And look, I'm not judging anybody if they need help. This is this is this is a great thing about America, is you know we really used to help people. Now what we're doing is making people reliant, dependent on the government to eat, to pay their bills, to have a roof over their head. It's scary. But just like your grandparents and just like your parents, they would have never taken a dime from the government. They had too much pride. They would have been embarrassed. Today, we, we have a, a generation where people will take anything free and they will not worry about the consequences. There is no such thing as a free lunch, ladies and gentlemen. And when you look at the billions of dollars and you look at this $15 billion uh, in tax credit payments that, that uh, was just sent. Where's the money coming from? Where do you think this is all coming from? And do you not think that this is going to have repercussions down the road? This is why you're paying four or five dollars for a gallon of gas. This is why it's twelve dollars to eat at McDonald's. This is why it's a couple hundred dollars to go to the grocery store now if you're lucky. Uh, this is why prices continue to go up because the Fed has to continue printing money out of thin air to pay for all this. And we are really watching a collapsing economy. And so going back to these people who don't get it, when you have 0% interest rates, you're printing money out of thin air, you're requiring massive debts, massive deficits, and you're paying people to sit at home, this is the, 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 the witnessing of a collapsing economy. Consumer sentiment measure falls to uh, pandemic era low sees one of the largest drops on record also on CNBC. The University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Index tumbled to 70.2 in its preliminary August reading. That was the lowest reading since 2011. The index is down more than 13% from July's 81.2. So there is economic concern here, no doubt. And we're going to begin to see more and more problems as unemployment runs out, as the benefits run out. Uh, look, uh, I don't know how many more magic tricks they have, 
but I believe they're running out of tricks. And everything that they're doing is just prolonging the inevitable. Uh, this train is off the tracks, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope that every one of you is preparing. Uh, CNBC, federal judge denies landlords request to block CDC national eviction ban. Uh, uh, this is absolutely disgusting. Uh, these landlords have just been just railroaded. Uh, it, just a total disgrace uh, to what is happening to, to the small business owner in America. I mean, it's just a hit job. U.S. Supreme Court strikes down part of New York's eviction ban. This was pretty interesting. The Supreme Court said that tenants must document or show documentation of a COVID-related hardship. Tenants cannot self-attest, striking down New York's eviction moratorium. Now, this is going to be a problem uh, in New York now because people uh, could just basically say that they were affected by this health crisis with no proof. Now they're gonna to have to show proof and this is gonna be a problem. We could see uh, eviction numbers in New York uh, unlike we've ever seen before. So things are gonna start erupting in New York. And this was very interesting uh, in this CNBC article. More than 830,000 tenants in New York are behind on their rent with the average debt of $4,000. I mean, think about this number. And this is just the numbers that we know about. 830,000 people that we know about. So you know the real number uh, in New York with tenants behind in rent is over a million. Easily. Easily. Uh, this is going to be scary going to really, really be scary. Just imagine the properties that are going to be absolutely destroyed when people finally uh, are evicted and have to exit these properties, the damage that's going to be done to so many of these rental properties throughout America. National Association of Realtors, this was very interesting, just looking at some of these numbers. And by the way, these people uh, who have a real dislike or disdain uh, for landlords. You're going to love your new landlords, BlackRock and Blackstone. If you didn't like your small mom and pop landlord, wait till you see what's coming. You're gonna love BlackRock and Blackstone, especially when they raise your rent. Mom and pop landlords manage 77% of two to four unit properties here in America. And uh, they're gonna be replaced by uh, the, the big boys, BlackRock, Blackstone, Vanguard, etc. cetera, uh, the big boys, they're going to come in and they're going to mop all of this up. 41% of rental properties are owned by individuals. That's going to be changing very soon. 42% of rental properties are run day to day by owners. And again, these people who have this disdain for their landlords or for landlords in general, these are the people, uh, you know, who put the money up, took the risk, took the risk on the tenant, uh, the people that have to insure the property, repair the property, et cetera, um, allow the opportunity for people who couldn't yet afford to buy a home to rent, you know, allowing them time to, to, to step up uh, and, and buy a home themselves. I, I mean, we need the small landlords in America. This is, this is a stepping stone for so many people. Most people don't just go out and buy a house. They rent first, save up money, and then they evolve to that point to where they can eventually purchase a, a, a home. 59% of properties have a mortgage or similar debt when we talk about rental properties. And these landlords are today just being absolutely decimated. Uh, but again, uh, you're going to enjoy BlackRock and Blackstone as your new landlords. I want to talk a minute about what's happening uh, right out here in the West Coast, uh, the cargo ships, and what's about to happen. Shippers frantic after China's busiest port shuts container terminal down due to this health crisis. This is on the hedge today. Shipping rates from China to the U.S., as many of you know, a 40-foot container now costs $20,000 just to ship from China uh, to America. 
Now, the worst case scenario is in play after Chinese authorities on Wednesday closed a major uh, container terminal at the port of Ningbo. Ningbo is the third largest container port in the world after Shanghai and Singapore. So if you think prices are rising fast now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready. You're going to see inflation uh, continue to run hot. Last time we were out, there was, you know, probably 30 of these massive container ships off the coast here, right outside of Long Beach. Um, that's going to eventually dry up now. And what happens when people need these cheap products? Uh, and, and now we're going to see more shortages coming to America. Why is that? Because, well, we shipped all of our jobs over there. And we are so dependent on cheap labor. And now the worst case scenario is happening. Uh, they're going to shut down uh, one of their ports, and uh, now we're going to have to wait for this for these cheap products. And what do you think that's going to do to the prices of these cheap products? They're going to continue to go up, up, and up. And so, you, you know, for for decades, America enjoyed all these cheap products, but now they're not so cheap, right? And now people are realizing those those great, well-paying manufacturing jobs, uh, the, those uh, technology jobs all gone and now the cheap products are going to become more and more expensive to purchase while you make less and less money while you work less hours while millions are dependent now on the government to send them money this is gonna ladies and gentlemen this is really a very concerning time uh, in America. This economy is no joke. People are really going to get hurt here. New York Times, overheated real estate market begins to cool. We're beginning to see it happen. U.S. medium home price, $385,000, up 10.3% from a year ago. Uh, how does the average American keep up with this? You go to Orange County, California, the, just to get a two-bedroom, 40, 50-year-old apartment, two-bedroom, going to cost you Two thousand, twenty-five, maybe twenty-five hundred dollars, even more uh, if you're near the beach. Uh, but you know, if you're in the North County, uh, a two-bedroom is easily going to cost you two thousand dollars, and you won't even get a garage. Um, I don't know uh, how people are doing it even at this point, but as we begin to see more shortages, like we're going to see, as we see inflation continue to run hot. Um, and, and just the cost of living, just continuing to skyrocket. Uh, I, I just don't know how people are doing. You look at the uh, average medium income uh, of an American, $35,000, yet almost $400,000 for a house. This just doesn't equate. Uh, two and two just doesn't equal four here. Y again, you have institutional money coming in and, and gobbling up many of these homes. You're going to see more of it. And as soon as the landlords get buried and they either are foreclosed on or they sell their homes, you're going to see institutional money pour in and buy up those properties and you're going to love your new landlord. But look, at the end of the day, this real estate bubble is being so overinflated, it will burst at some point. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And when that day comes, wow, uh, it is going to make 2008 look like a Sunday school picnic. Last article, and I'm just going to paraphrase, was on the hedge today, Rickards, Jim Rickards, What's happening with gold? Gold had another very good day today. Uh, had a good day yesterday. Cryptocurrency is exploding today. Uh, look, I don't have anything against cryptocurrencies. If you're gambling in these, in, the, in these cryptos and in these markets, more power to you. I hope you're making money, but I hope you're buying assets and really protecting yourself. Because the more I just see things, I, 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 you see, uh, I think the S&P at all-time high today, Dow Jones up today, I mean... People just think that nothing bad can happen. There is no fear now. There is no concern, no fear. People are going all in, doubling down. Uh, they are just blinded uh, by this euphoria that is happening. And look, I truly do believe we're going to wake up one day, and as fast as this thing went up, it's going to come down 100 times faster, 100 times harder, and it is going to be relentless. It's going to be biblical, ladies and gentlemen. Given the pressures on the dollar from interest rates, inflation expectations, global capital flows, health fears, political dysfunction, and slowing growth, we are in the early steps of a financial panic, says Jim Rickards. 
And I agree right here with what he says. Things are calm with everything that's happening right now. This is nothing. This is calm. We're going to look back at 2021 and think, oh, these were the good times. And for many people, they are, especially the 1%. But things are calm right now. Nothing really bad is happening. I'm just watching this economy uh, be killed uh, by a thousand cuts, a uh, thousand razor blades just cutting through this economy and it's dying a very slow death. Death by a thousand cuts and this economy is bleeding out. We're watching uh, the job market bleed out. We're watching small business bleed out. Um, we're looking at opportunity just bleeding out in America. And it's just really an ugly time uh, in our economic history, no doubt. And it's going to have severe social consequences also. But things are calm right now. They're very calm uh, compared to what we're going to see. And I truly believe that what we're going to see in 2022 is going to be horrific. I really, truly believe. I believe we're going to start seeing problems this fall, uh, especially if these moratoriums uh, begin to expire. We're going to see big problems. Now, again, they could extend it. They may want to keep everybody in their homes till after Christmas. I don't know. But uh, I think things are going to get very real in 2022. And right now, things are calm. And this is a great time to acquire precious metals, to own something, something you can get to, something that you can hold, something that's real money. And while it's being manipulated and beat down, this is the time to buy it. While people are ignoring it and, and jumping in to the Ponzi schemes and playing at the casinos, while they ignore it, you need to be buying it. And this isn't financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I, I've bought more gold. I'll be buying more gold and silver this month. SD Bullion, I have a link down below. I know uh, people are so worried about that link down below. I don't care where you buy gold or where you buy your silver. I really don't. I buy my gold and silver from SD Bullion because they're a reputable company. They, they've got some of the best prices. They get my gold and silver to me very, very quickly. And they were referred to me by the fans of this show. So that's who I deal with. Deal with whoever you want. But if you want to deal with a reputable company, uh, a company that's going to give you the best prices and a company that's going to get your medals to you as uh, soon as possible, SD Bullion, link down below. But uh, I, I have no doubt that this is the time to be acquiring this stuff. Gold and silver has never been so important. To own something physical, to, to own something real, to own God's money, there's never been a time, at least in my lifetime, where it's been more important. Uh, I don't know if you guys had a chance to check out uh, Aaron Early's video on silver uh, yesterday. It was fantastic. Go to uh, Texas Silver. Uh, YouTube Texas Silver. Great, great show talking uh, about how to buy silver, what kind of silver he's buying. He breaks it down. I thought it was really, really good. So if you're new to precious metals, if you're new to buying silver and you have questions, check out that video at Texas Silver. I think you'll get a lot out of it. I'm going to leave it there today. God bless every one of you. Thanks for watching. Share this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and walk close to God, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, something wicked this way comes without a doubt. It is getting very, very close. Talk to you soon.